what is up what is up what is up hit that like button subscribe hit that bell follow me in dreams i'm young text youtube and dreams so the walk cycle is important notice how i have the feet moving that's actually very important to get this looking right while it's walking panting is a little bit harder but you can animate the panting yourself the reason why it's harder is because whenever it breathes it can affect the way the feet move if that makes sense so you actually have to animate that part yourself outside of that this is fairly simple to actually replicate so what it looks like from the top what it looks like from the sides and i had to sculpt the feet area to where um you know the arms and feet to where they look um you know more like traditional feet and they just get smaller as they go down as you can see um on the back end especially where the back legs are do that with the front legs with just not as much and then you should be good um let me go ahead and start this by saying copy these settings for the basic puppet settings. These are good settings to copy. Just anything you see, just copy it because these settings will work fine. Uh, you can mess with the sprayness and this is the breathness that I'm telling you about that messes with the legs. So you got to turn that down. Otherwise, it'll do this. You'll see it like prominently messing with the legs going up and down as you can see. So that's why that's turned down. Uh, turn this off and turn this off. If you turn this off, It'll turn off all the animations for this stuff up here that I just showed you, these effects right here. Turn this off, procedural walk. You must turn that off, turn this off, and make sure you turn this down. After that, copy every setting that I've showed you so far. Copy this setting after you're done with the puppet. Like, you'll just have to mess with the hitbox. This is the built-in hitbox. You'll mess with that. Just make it make sense and make it to where it doesn't cover the ground area where the legs are. then label it and then you're done with this right here this right here important this is uh, how fast it'll turn uh turn this up that's important how fast it'll stop turn this up how fast it'll stop also you can mess with this if it wants if you want to get it to walk up like slopes and stuff mess with that and this outside of that um read everything do everything you know make sure everything's how it is this right here is our built-in walk animation so whenever we are ready, I'm going to explain this a little bit more, but this first keyframe and last keyframe have no data. They are just set to linear. All these keyframes are set to linear, but this keyframe has data. Here's what its animation looks like. Notice the legs, how it's bent forward, bent backwards back here. Very important how the uh, arms are, not the legs, the arms. That's the most important thing to getting this animation right. Having this bent backwards, having this bent backwards also, having this bent backwards, having this bent backwards also. You could scope in, press this, and then that's how you can bend it backwards. That's important. So that's the first one. And the second one, complete opposite almost. First one, second one. Just remember how these are. We'll go back to this. I want to show you this because it's very important to get that right. Delete the keyframe. All this stuff is in your poses. Press L1 and X on your puppet, then press L1 and X on this microchip, then press L1 and X on this. In here, there's going to be a keyframe connected to this. Delete that and replace that with this. Put this into the power of that keyframe. Set this to loop. And then put left stick, this right here, into the power of the keyframe also. You can mess with the speed. It's very important that this is not that long, so make sure this isn't that long. It should be very short, around, I guess, 80, sec 80 milliseconds long, not even a second. Um, and then you can size this backwards. First and last keyframe have no data, but are set to linear. All right, so how did I actually get this puppet to do this? Notice the stance. The leg is pointed forward, as you can see. There's an arch in the back, sort of. This leg is like this. And as you go backwards, they move backwards perfectly. This moves forward perfectly. It's not moving in a slant. It can kind of move in a slant if it's yours, uh, just make sure it doesn't too much. The puppet is also in the center of this marquee thing. 
all these things you have to take into account. The speed is very important. Turn speed is very important. That's super important. Let's begin with how I actually got this looking like this. I went here. Maybe in the future they'll have an animal puppet option right here. But I went here. Laid it down, alright? I want an X on the puppet. Double tapped right there. Moved it like this. Made it as center as possible. Moved it down. Then, I press circle, so that way nothing is selected. One here, put the legs like this. Do the same with these legs. Let's take a look at mine real quick. The legs should be like this. Straight down and a little bit bent right here. So what you'll do now, size this down. Size this down a little. What I'd do is just go ahead and do this. You can keep the head like that, but I didn't do that. What I did was I pressed L1 and X on it. You can delete this circle if you want to. That's what I did. You don't have to. Then I moved this like this. And that's how I made my dog head. I made sure it was in the center of the neck area. Again, you do not have to delete that uh, circle unless you want to. That's how I made my dog head. Then I made sure the feet were pointed forward perfectly. Then I sized this down, double tapped, and brought it down here to where whenever you're moving, the character's not moving in the air whenever you're moving your character. And then you gotta get the arch. How do you get the arch? You do this. Then you wanna press up on this. And then this is how it should look until you're actually ready to sculpt your dog. When you're sculpting, you will actually go to here, size this up, and then you'll be able to make the legs and feet small as you go down, like I said in the beginning. So it's smaller as you get closer to the hands. And that's what will get that perfect whenever you're actually sculpting your puppet. Right here, you'll want to make sure, you can do this in mirror mode, but I don't do it in mirror mode. But you want to make sure that's like that. And on this area, you want to make sure it gets smaller too on both sides. That's your tail area. And then you want to do the same thing with the back legs back here, how you make, uh, made the front legs like this. Let's just go ahead and keep on going. To test out to make sure that the legs go backwards perfectly, go right here, or go forward perfectly, sorry. Or right, go to the top one, see if it's moving forward perfectly. If it is, you're ready to start animating. Um, test out these two also. If that's not moving forward perfectly, adjust it. Whenever it is moving forward perfectly, or near perfect, you're ready to start animating. Subscribe, hit that like button, and hit that bell. As you can see, there's an arch. You can always mess with the head. Move that accordingly wherever you want to move it, whether it's a horse or whatever. Look at it from the top. Make sure nothing's poking out the wrong way. Look at it from the sides, and you're ready to start animating. Before we start animating, like I said in the beginning, make sure your procedural animations, and you also mess with your hitbox like I told you in the beginning also, make sure this walk is off. You'll have to mess with your jump animations, otherwise they'll move like this. Just move them around perfectly, how I mess with the one over here. And there's your jump animations. You can delete this if you want to, but this is the one that I told you you had to delete and then put it in the timeline. You might not want to de-delete it abruptly, you might want to pull out the timeline first. Then plug that into the timeline, set this timeline to loop, 
and then make sure that you don't make this any longer than 80 seconds. Left stick, plug that into there also. Set it to loop. Make sure the timeline is around 80 seconds long. It's about a minute or, you know, one second. That'll work for right now. Pull out one keyframe, set it to linear. This is the first keyframe that I was talking about. Set it to linear, clone it. Now we're ready to make our first animations. So you'll animate it the way that I showed you in the beginning of the video. The legs don't have to be perfect while you're animating. You can like adjust them if they're not perfectly straight, but you technically want this leg to be perfectly straight before you even start. But you can do that afterwards, even after you're done animating. Sort of like how this one's straight. It's even sort of bent a little, but it doesn't have to, you know, be, you know, if you want to make it super perfect, like I have it over there, this is what it would look like. And the back leg can be bent a little bit. Let's start. You'll take it off a mirror if that's on. And then you'll want to do that. And then do this. Then, like I said, the feet part is the most important. Do not animate the feet. You can go into mirror mode for this. It will not look right. It's looking good. Time for the back legs. This one should be forward while this one goes backwards. Then you press this. Do this. You might want to make sure it's point. Oh, the feet should be pointed forward perfectly. If they're not, then fix it. And you can mess with this. You don't necessarily want them too exaggerated, you know, but you know, you want it good. Then clone with this keyframe. It's the exact opposite. So this time this one, take it off a of mirror if it's on there. This time this one's uh, forward. And this time this one's backwards. And you might not even have to mess with the feet this time. This time this one's forward. This time this one's backwards. And then you can clone this first keyframe with no data. Make sure you push this back. You got a perfect animation. If we delete this first uh, puppet that I made, we could see the second one works perfect. All you have to do now is make the adjustments that I told you to make in here, and you should be good. Once you're done with that, you know everything that I know about this. You can perfect it to your liking. Again, like I said, you do want to get this hitbox right. It should not go over the legs. It should not be around the leg area at all like that. It should be more like this. This is your built-in hitbox that works off of this. Also check out my hitbox tutorial, built-in hitbox tutorial, to understand more about this collision shape right here. It's very important for 2D games to understand this and get rid of glitches.
You can perfect it as you want. You might like that one. And you might like this style over here. Go here, set it to force possession if you want to. And it's sliding. Because we don't have a deceleration up, we don't have this up. And again, like I said, you'll want to turn this up, maybe not too much, whatever I had it at. And then you it'll it'll, it'll feel like good gameplay after you've uh, messed with those. Thank you so much for watching. It'll be up to you to decide if you want to keep this on, but you have to turn this off and don't forget to mess with the jump animations. Here's what mine look like. So I probably use the uh, mirror. And then I kept this one the same, I think. The jump descent I just kept the same, I do believe. I may have messed with it a tiny bit. That's about it. Subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, and peace. Hope you enjoyed this one.